Hello. Oh, well, happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Interesting times. Hello, Shelly. Good morning. Good afternoon. That's the kind of day I'm having, folks. I'm not even sure whether it's morning or afternoon. So whenever you are watching this, wherever you are watching it from, today's going to be interesting. <laughs> How are you doing, Shelly? Now, for folks who are watching or listening, perhaps for the first time, if you're tuning in, welcome. This is our Wednesday Living Room Pop-Up Art Studio live stream that we do. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's a wonky Wednesday. That's what I'm going to call it. It's a wonky Wednesday and that's okay. <laughs> um, this is something we do here at the living room every Wednesday afternoon. Uh, since we can't get together and gather and create one with or alongside one another in the studio space, we are doing it online with one another. So I want you to imagine this time just to give you some permission to do whatever you need or want to do to create, to take care of yourself, to make whatever you want to make or whatever you need to make, just like you would do so if you were coming to the studio to say hello. I got my cup of coffee here. You're welcome to have your cup of tea or coffee or whatever you need for this afternoon. Just a reminder for folks who are joining us, the safe space rules of the studio also apply in the virtual space, which is reminding one another to be kind and supportive of one another, especially yourself. We're really good at being nice to other people, but same as in the studio, same as here in my home studio. Sometimes it can be really, really hard to be kind and supportive to ourselves. So if your inner critic is acting up today, like mine is, just ask it to just, you know, say hello, acknowledge it, and then ask it to settle down, take a back seat. Take a break, go away for a while so that we can create and connect with one another with some playfulness and peace. Um, the next part of safe space at the studio is if anyone were to come into the space who had been drinking or using, we'll invite them to come back on another day when they haven't been. And this is no judgment against folks who use or drink or using or drinking. For us, it's just important that we know we can communicate with one another effectively and sometimes when folks are in an altered state due to substances, it's hard to know where they're at and if we're, if we're really understanding one another. Such an important thing, right? Um, and same to, you know, could be said for mental health as well. And this is something I haven't touched upon as much in these streams here. But if, you know, if someone were to come to the studio or indeed if someone were here on these streams, if you're having a really bad day, a really difficult moment, and they aren't doesn't seem to be helping you, then it might be a good time to reach out for some other supports in the community that can help you have your best day, to get the support you need, to get just that connection that makes meaning for you. It's not always going to be the living room, it's, and I'm okay with that. I think whatever works, there are so many different ways to find support and connection in a community. We're really lucky. Uh, we're really lucky that there's just not one thing, right? And I always love when people share those things with one another. So if you're noticing something in the chat, which is one way to connect with me, if someone seems to be having a difficult day and maybe there's something that you found helpful for yourself or a resource that you're aware of, feel free to share it with other folks. Um, because you never know, you never know what the thing might be that helps someone shift out of one place into a slightly better place, right? Um, the last thing of the safe space for the living room is if anything happens in the space that makes you feel uncomfortable or weird or just not good, can you let me know? Can you let me know right away? Or let someone else in the community, all our amazing community members know, um, reach out. Let them know, let people know how their words or behaviors impact you. Um, I find like 99% of the time, people don't mean to be douchebags. That's, I think, an assumption that I can work from in a positive way. But more often than not, we just don't realize the power that our words or our behaviors or our actions have. And sometimes we've been doing things for a long time without realizing 
the consequences that they have. So we can teach one another. Hey, Amanda, how's it going? Oh, it's so good to see you, Amanda. Um, I was just given the spiel, so join in if you like. Um, we can teach one another how we can be more supportive of others in our community and maybe grow and learn about how to human a little bit more effectively ourselves along the way. Such an important thing. Please don't marginalize your feelings. Let's, let's name those feelings. Let's identify those feelings so that we can talk about them and learn about what this, this humaning thing is all about because it's not always easy. Definitely not always easy. Oh, Nikki. Nice to see you, Nikki. Welcome. Welcome. One of our fabulous students on break from class. Oh, that's so good. I hope your day is going well. I know you guys, all the students, all the students right now are just doing their best to keep up uh, in this strange new way of learning they've been invited into. And Christine. Hello, Christine. It's so good to see you too. And Ashley. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Zoom meetings happening right now. I'm so glad you were able to join us, even if it's just for a little, little moment here. And Madison, so great to see you, Madison. How are you? Ah, uh, see, afternoons like this make me feel like I'm still in connection with people. I hope they help you feel like you're still in connection with people too. Um, you see, today, I, I wasn't quite sure what to create today, to tell you the truth. Like I said at the top of this, um, I'm calling this a wonky Wednesday. It feels very wonky to me. A lot of good things. Hey, Wendy, how's it going? A um, little bit wonky, a little bit uh, weird. I'm not sure if it's morning or afternoon. Something's going on in my head and I don't know exactly what it is. So I might use some of the art today to explore what I'm feeling. I invite you to do the same if you're open to it. Um, and again, like we say here, just because I'm working on a certain project or working on something in a certain way, you do not have to do the same thing I'm doing. Gather whatever supplies you have on hand, whatever you feel comfortable working with, and feel free to do what you need to do today. And maybe that's not even art. So maybe you're listening while you're doing homework, or maybe, hey, Amanda, again. Oh, that's a good question, Amanda. When is the living room opening again? We'll get to that. Uh, hey, Laura. Nice. Oh, Interesting, Laura's today was a trying day at work. Really need to sit and listen. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for being here. Um, maybe I'm not the only one who's having some difficult, some difficult moments today. Maybe we can be supportive with one another and for one another. You don't even necessarily need to talk about what it is that's making your Wednesday wonky. But uh, if you are having a wonky Wednesday, know that you're not alone, okay? Oh, and Dan says hi from Amanda as well. Oh, hello, Dan. So good to see you here too. It's been a long time. I'm so glad you're back. Um, and Shelly, oh, that's lovely. Saying hello to everyone. So blessed to be here. We're pretty lucky, guys. I feel so, so very, so very lucky to have connections with everyone here. And for folks who might be joining us for the first time, you're included in that as well. Even if you're not chatting, you don't need to join the chat. If all you want to do is listen, just have us on in the background, that's okay too. I'm, I know you're there and I'm so happy that you're there. And if you want to reach out and say something, feel free. If not, that's entirely cool too. You do you. Do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And for Laura, that seems to be ice cream today. Nice. Oh, interesting. And Ashley is acknowledging there's a pattern for sure on the moods being off. Interesting. <laughs> the moon schedule. I, you know what? I can't say I know lots about that kind of stuff. Uh, I wish I could recognize a pattern in it. Sometimes I just think, yeah, humaning is hard. And every once in a while, you're going to have days where it's beautiful outside, where the weather might be perfect. Maybe you're surrounded by really cool people. You've had interesting conversations. And still there's this thing bubbling away in the back of your brain. Um, I think there's a lot of challenging stuff happening in the world. A lot of good, good stuff too. But within that, each one of us still has the day to day and in uncertain times like this. And yes, we are still living in uncertain times, right? Without knowing if we're safe or if we can be safe with one another. You know, it, it can be tricky. We can be surprised by wonkiness, but let's name it, let's get it out there and let's do our best to shift things 
and oh yes, Laura's recognizing there was a beautiful crescent moon this morning waning. Moments like that can really make a difference, can't they? Just taking the time to be able to notice something in your day. Like right now, if I look out the window here, I look out onto the roof of the church that is next to us, and there's something about this roof that I find really, really peaceful. I don't think it's because of the church. I just think it's something about seeing the pattern, like the sunlight hitting the tree and the shadows of the leaves moving on the surface of the roof. It's a really beautiful thing if I just let myself notice it for a moment. Yeah, and if I notice it for a moment, and I remember to breathe at the same time, that's nice. Thanks guys, thanks for reminding me to notice something. Oh, nice. Oh, the coffee filter flowers. So Shelly was just talking, we, we're beginning to share more content on YouTube. Uh, some of you might have noticed we did a video for the annual Peony Festival at Oshawa's Botanical Gardens. And uh, yeah, we made coffee filter peony flowers. And I love that. Um, I love upcycling stuff whenever possible. At the studio, we happen to have a whole bunch of coffee filters, so I was really lucky. Uh, and we use we used bingo dabbers to create the colors and then, well, you know what, you can go over to YouTube and watch it if you like. It's a lovely, uh, fairly simple activity, really fun. If you don't have bingo dabbers, any water soluble kind of ink will work. So you could use food coloring if you have it. You could use like Crayola markers will also, the water will also make the colors blend, not perhaps as vibrantly as the ink. Hello, hello Suzanne in the bingo dabbers, but, um, it's uh, really what you're trying to do is create color blocks that blend with one another to make beautiful, accidental, colorful petals for your peony. And yeah, there's lots of different ways to do that. If you discover a new way, please let me know because not everyone has bingo dabbers at home. Not everyone has coffee filters at home too. So if you don't have coffee filters, you can also try with paper towels um, or different kind of napkins, like sort like, you know, paper serviettes can work too. Something with a little bit of structure or some layers to it should work out fine as well. But uh, yeah, let me know how those work out, Shelly. I'm super excited. Uh, share your pictures. I love seeing what people work on. I've been loving seeing what people have been working on after these live stream Wednesday hangouts. That's pretty, that's been really awesome too. And what am I going to do today, folks? I think I want to play with color again. I might play with some embroidery. Definitely know I need more caffeine. Hold on a moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to, yeah, just play with color and let my mind do what it needs to do. Let it wander a little bit, let it dream a little bit. Let it ponder the big questions that we're all pondering these days. And Dan. <laughs> Yeah, Dan breaking out the bingo dabbers from 1992. If you, that, you know what, they'll work, they'll work. You might have to re-energize them, reactivate them a little bit. That's, and Dan, I do want to say, Dan Walters wrote this beautiful um, article. I'm trying to, I, I read it, I, you know, when I finally had a chance to sit down and read it today, uh, an article speaking to, well, sort of recognizing the role that community agencies and services play, whether they're cultural or involved in social services or health or wellness, and how so many of us are, are struggling during this time when things have, you know, the way we work with human beings has changed so drastically. And it was a beautiful ar article recognizing that, recognizing, acknowledging the pain that a lot of us are experiencing, the fears we have for our community members, um, and also kind of like, pointing to the universities and the colleges to encourage them, to invite them to examine how they can play a role in helping us move forward and facilitating a greater wellness for these agencies and the individuals they work with. And I'm so excited that you guys are leading the way in that. Um, Ontario Tech U, hats off, metaphorically speaking. Uh, I think learning institutions, post-secondary learning institutions are such an important 
part of our communities, bringing new ideas, new people, new faces, new ways of learning, and, and you ask the important questions that folks like us can't always ask. We don't always have the ability, at least to, or the platform to make the questions heard. You folks do, and I'm so proud that you're leading the way in that for us and doing what you can to stand by us and the community. <laughs> oh, and where can you share your work? Ashley's asking. So, uh, anything you create that you want to share with us? Generally speaking, every Wednesday afternoon after the live stream hangout, um, be one of our super awesome, amazing volunteers and artists in the community. We'll uh, make another post sharing something that they've created. Now, if I haven't yet seen B tune in, that's okay. It's a little life movement. We got to do what we got to do. Um, if uh, I don't see, if B's not able to post, I'll make a post. And you can share images and pictures, or if it's something creative writing that you're working on, for example, you might want to type it in. You can share it underneath in the comment section to that. You can also share it in the comment section of the live stream. I'm not always able to see the images when they're first shared, but uh, I try to go back afterwards and read through all the comments to make sure I see what I've missed. And, uh, oh, why did I do that? Oh, folks. Boop, 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 boop. I'm playing with pigment inks today, so things might get a little messy. Uh, yeah, you can share, uh, but if you, I think if you share them in the comment stream here during the live stream, other people that are participating in the chat can see them, see the things you create as well. So, and the same says, like, same goes for if you have, um, you might have blogs or tumblers or websites that you'd like to share where you do most of your creative work or where you share uh, the things that you do please feel free to share links to those too. Let's, we can use this time to connect with one another on other platforms, to spread the word about what we do. Yeah. And then, oh, that's excellent. Dan has just shared the link to that article. Good timing. Um, so if you'd like to know, oh, goodness gracious, I'm having an incoming call. This has never happened before, folks. I don't know if I can answer right now, so I'm going to decline right now, but that's awesome. Uh, I'm not sure, should I answer? Now the person who's calling, I don't want to shout out, but if you want to send me a message, if it's something you would like to share, because I think if I answer your call, it might be open to everyone who's observing right now. So uh, if you want to send me a message, if you want to sort of use this as a platform to shout something out to folks, let me know and then we'll try the call again, because that's, that's kind of a cool thing. How exciting, I'm learning stuff about technology. We're learning together. Uh, but Dan did share the link there. So if you'd like to see, learn a little bit more about what Dan's thinking and the work he's doing, the wonderful work he's doing, and that Ontario Tech and uh, Durham College are you know, trying to move forward, please do, because places like that need support as well, right? They want to work with the community. They have so many amazing resources that are available for folks. Uh, but sometimes it takes the community letting them know, like reaching out to connect with them as well, to say, yeah, we're interested. We want to learn more. We want to work with you. It's not all about, well, like I said, I suppose student endeavors, yes. But students learn and grow by working with community. And communities benefit when colleges and universities are there to enrich the experience of the, the culture of the neighborhoods they're in, right? I'm seeing that Shelly, yeah, I'm sorry you had a rough day yesterday. I don't think you're the, I don't think you're alone there. Is there something in particular that you wanted to talk about or was it, was it just enough to know that you're not alone and that I'm glad you're here creating with us? You took that rough day, you got through it. You got through your, if today's a wonky Wednesday for me, what, a terrible Tuesday? You got through the terrible Tuesday. That's like a, that's a cheering kind of moment there. But anyone who got through a terrible Tuesday, anyone who's making it through a wonky Wednesday, good on ya. Keep on hanging in. And Jenny is asking to add links to the educational institutions that are working on art programs. You wanna go back to school? Yes, fantastic. Um, 
I'll try and look some stuff up. If there are other people in the thread here who are chatting, who want to look like learn more about that, please, 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 uh, if you know of resources or certain programs that you found beneficial, share it. I know that Durham College has a fine arts program and I know some of the teachers there, they're pretty amazing. Danny Crosby has an incredible community collaboration class that comes to work with the living room actually every fall. The students come to work with us uh, and meet community members because it's one of those odd things. How can you have a community collaboration course without actually collaborating with the community. Uh, so I always love seeing initiatives like that. Ontario Tech did a similar thing uh, last year when I, I had the honor and the privilege of going in to work with Dr. Wesley Critchlow's class on uh, Black Lives Matter and really examining justice and social justice and how we can reshape the system we're in. And as we all have been witnessing, it's time it is time. There's no more excuses. We need to re-examine. We need to make some changes. We need to make them fast so that people feel safe. Um, oh, that's good to know. Yeah, Shelly's saying better today and hearing the Instagram yesterday. That was a fantastic Instagram. Uh, the chat with uh, Andres. Andres is such an extraordinary human being also known as Zombie Art Squad. So for the squeamish, there will be moments of, uh, he gives us a little tour of his studio. Uh, he made a zombie of me, which was the best. So you can go, I've shared it in the living room story. If you want to see Mary as a zombie, please, yeah, go check out that Instagram story. Go check out Andres Zombie Art Squad. Um, he's doing a, this 100 faces challenge, I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's see what's happening. Amazing. So, so this is fascinating. I'm having messages come in. I'm doing a live stream with you. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, so I've got to, yeah, I've got to respond to that. Okay, I will respond to that, but maybe not now because it's something I got to think about. Um, how amazing is that, that I can be talking to everyone and see a message come through? <laughs> Wonky Wednesday, you're gone now. This is now officially a, a wondrous Wednesday as old person is amazed by technology. Um, yeah, every day gets better. But if, if you want to, again, just wrapping up with what we, what we did with Andres, there was a lot of talk about art coming and emerging out of dark places and how the difficult things we've experienced that our families, our culture has experienced, we can use that to move forward. We can use that to create, to make meaning of what we've been through, even if we can't put that meaning into words uh, necessarily. Art carries a lot of that for us until we can recognize it and give name to it ourselves. It's one of the things I love about art. And I think it's another reason sometimes, what was the phrase, a uh, student, from Toronto Art Therapy, I think it was Sammy taught me once, like a lovely phrase, to let the art hold the hard stuff. Let the art hold the hard stuff. So not all art has to be beautiful. And if you're having a wonky Wednesday or a terrible Tuesday, make some terrible art about it. Just let it out. Let the page or the fabric or the song or the garden, whatever it might be, let it hold the stuff that you don't want or that you can't really take on right now. It'll be there waiting for you when you want to look at it. That's the amazing thing about art as well. Hello B, welcome B. It's good to see you here. Yeah. And I'm loving the conversations around communities. And again, just welcoming people who might be joining us midway through. Uh, a lot of interesting talks about, well, coming out of rough days, rough moments, what we do to feel, well, I don't know what we do to feel better. I'm doing this to feel better. Uh, talking about amazing supports from the community, including post-secondary institutions who are leading the way in sort of I, one way you could look at it is decolonizing education, post-secondary education, reconnecting and providing learning experiences, honest, amazing learning experiences for people of all ages, all abilities, all walks of life. Um, and not, you know, not simply those that might have the privilege to be able to attend those universities. We were talking about art programs. If someone knows 
or has resources for arts programs that they want to share. Um, and you know, it's also helpful. Was it Ashley who was asking, or was it Jenny? Um, if you're something that is really like can be a really helpful thing to think about too, is if you're interested in going back to art school, think about what kind of what you want to do with that art or how you maybe spend some time daydreaming, envisioning how you practice that art. Uh, and that might help you decide which kind of arts program you want to go to. It could be an arts class, it could be a full-on post-secondary degree or diploma. Um, there's so many paths that are open. Knowing, like having a sense of where you want to take that creativity out into the world might help you, yeah, identify which place is right for you. But I do know, especially right now, there are plenty of people at all the colleges, universities, uh, you know, even the Robert McLaughlin Art Gallery offers arts programming. I'm sure they must be working on things that they can do online, even though art galleries technically can be open again as of this Friday, I think. But um, there are plenty of options out there for you. I think reaching out and just calling someone, send an email, say, what do you have on offer? And people will be, they'd be more than happy to teach you about what they offer and perhaps even to create new programming that supports people that are coming forward with new, new reasons, new wonders, new questions about learning how to be an artist. And let's see, fantastic. The Arcadia Project. So Jenny's asking, what is the Arcadia Project? Oh, I'm, I'm falling behind on the chat, guys, yeah. I'm not sure what the Arcadia Project is. Can you refresh my memory? Is it something that I might have shared? There was something a while ago. And you know what, there's so much, so much amazing stuff happening out there. Sometimes I don't always see everything that's going on. So what am I gonna do? I've got some pigment inks. I'm working with this, um, this medium today called Brusho, which is a specialized, really, really colorful powdered ink and I've only ever used it on paper before but today I want to try it on fabric so let's see what happens you add these little dots of ink on here this little like little powder piles and then you spray it with water and maybe for now we'll just come on So I don't know if you can see. The inks begin to activate with the water. I'm gonna dry up some of that ink there. I brought these to the studio for a few workshops last year and that's one of the days where we ended up creating. Oh, there we go. So you can see that it's just so colorful. The, the colors are so rich. Um, I'm just gonna wipe up a little bit here. Because they're powders, sometimes you don't know where they've, where they've put themselves until after they start showing up. Interesting, all right. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit more. Yeah, and these things are activated by water, so you get really, really beautiful color patterns emerging. Let me just do that. And then when I'm, once this piece is, I'm gonna set it aside to dry. This is like a, a variation on the bingo dappers, I suppose. And there's Shiloh here, hey Shiloh. So good, wow, how you doing? It's so good to see you. Again, I can't see, I can't always see when people join. I see when people chat. Um, but I don't always see when people start watching and that's okay. You don't need to make yourself visible through chatting. But if you're out there and you see people joining that I might not see, uh, feel free to say hello and welcome them to the pop-up. See how they're doing. Let's see. So instead of spraying this time, I'm just going to drip some water on here. Come on my makeshift spray bottle. Let's see. <laughs> it's funny, the, yeah, the not, 
days can sometimes blur into one another, but not in a completely lost week. Um, I feel like even though we might be working in a different way, in different places, it's funny how busy I feel and how time is flying by much faster than it did before when I was in the studio. So there are days like today where I think, what day? Is today Wednesday? I have to remind myself. I have to look at the calendar a hundred times. I think it's just because everything feels so much more intense about the way we're working, the way when we socialize, uh, when we go out of the house, everything, when we go to work, for those of you who are working um, right now out of the house, everything, I mean, I don't know, this is how it feels to me anyways, it feels so intense, so rich, um, which can be great sometimes, and at other times it can be a little, a little tiring, exhausting, and that might be what's contributing to my wonky Wednesday, folks. And if you are joining again, just welcome, 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 welcome to the Facebook live stream. It's really great to have you here. Those who are chatting, those who are just sitting back, listening or observing or making art with us in the background. I'm really glad you're here and hanging out with us in the pop-up art studio. I know some folks mentioned off the top that today's been a little difficult, which you know, I'm doubly glad you're here then. It's not always easy. It's not always easy to make that time for yourself. So thank you for taking care of yourself. Thank you for prioritizing yourself. Hmm. Yeah, I've never used these pigments on fabric before. I don't think I have, anyways. Let's see what happens now. I'm looking for those happy accidents, things I don't need to control that much. I want to see things happen. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the intensity of adjusting and kind of never quite knowing what every day will bring that can take a toll and the only thing sometimes we have is the structure we've created for ourselves or the structure that work or family life those kind of unpaid things uh, unpaid labor things might be providing for us I realized this past week that um, hadn't really taken time off in a long time and so what does that look like during this time taking vacations but it has to happen right something I think we still need to break up our time and introduce new things to our days and our lives and give our brains space to relax and prepare for the next you know whatever might be ahead but I think for those of us who are spending more time at home than we ever have before that can feel really strange but it's just another way of creating boundaries for ourselves, I guess. I don't know. Has anyone been finding... Has anyone... Well, I guess... I mean, where, what am I talking about, guys? What do you think I'm talking about? Is this about boundary making? Is this just adjusting to a new phase of what we're going through with new things happening, things opening up again? Sometimes slightly confusing messages from leadership about what we should do, what we have been doing, and why we're doing it. If there is... quality of overwhelm to certain moments of your day you're not alone you're not alone let's see here we go yeah hmm 
And I'm hoping people are still being kind out there. On the whole, in my limited experience of the outside world, yeah, it feels like people are still being kind, but I wonder if we're still being as kind to ourselves as we were a few months ago. Yeah, Christine, that's something I'm, I'm feeling too, the fact that like, jobs are opening, um, but you might have an opportunity to go back to work, but how safe do you feel? How safe are they helping you feel? Or ready? I mean, Shelley's buses scare you to death. Yeah, there's a, how do we, how do we help one another feel safe again while still respecting what we need? Because to be honest, I don't think I'm ready. Like way back at the beginning of this live stream, Amanda, Amanda and Dan asked, when is the living room going to open up again? And I think the honest, the only honest answer I have for, for that question right now is not until there's a vaccine or until there's a treatment, an effective treatment that works so that if someone were to get sick, they could be treated and return to, you know, having a healthy life in a reliable way. Because I, I know that there are things we're missing. I know for some more than others, this is an extraordinarily difficult time, especially if you have loved ones that you can't be near right now. I want to send a shout out to anyone who might be experiencing that and the pull to be close to them. Sending you so much love. I, you know, the feeling of wanting to just have the routines that you had before. Yeah, the, the, the sudden questioning of what's my purpose in my day now. Um, that's something, I mean, in a certain way, that's something we have control over, I suppose, our own days. But as the circles begin to widen and the invitation comes back to stretch out, to get back into the old routines, I think, speaking for myself, there's a real question there of, well, how, how do I feel about the old routines? Do I want to go back to the old routines as they were? Or can I make, can I change them? Can I make them better? Can I make them healthier? Can I make them happier? Um, for everyone involved, not just me. The studio is a, such a special place. Um, and it's, it's its own. I often think of the studio like it's its own art experience. Hello, Michelle. Oh, I have another student who may or may not be sneaking away from class. Shh, I won't tell anyone, Michelle. You're all good. Um, the studio, in, I often think of it like its own art project, like it's its own organic space. Ah, oh, hello, David. Oh my goodness, it's so great to know you're here. Oh, well, that's lovely. Yes, so David, what a beautiful point. So. So David says, I think many of us are still grieving the loss of life as we knew, and it's going to take more time. And David, I just want to whew, echo that and help hold that for everyone who might be listening. Something big has happened, and I don't think it's the kind of thing that we... And I use the word thing knowing that it's so much more complicated than a thing, right? I think we've, collectively, we've experienced or are experiencing a change, a, a transformation of sorts. And it's not something that you pretend didn't happen. We have to acknowledge it and work with it and listen to ourselves. If there's something where you're at, if you're not ready to do something, honor that, spend time with that, examine that, talk to other people about that. Uh, being like learning how to listen to that voice and examine, you know, what's contributing to it, what's being echoed in it that you may not be aware of is really important too. Ah, your meltdown yesterday. So, but when you look after kids and losing job and being stuck at home, yeah, it's, it's difficult to shift, especially if your life sounds like Shelly for you, there was so much life happening and then the pieces of that they didn't disappear because they're still there. There's just now space between you and that 
you know, what you love to do and the people you love to be around. Um, and that space, even though it may not be as vast as we think, that space, no matter what size the space, can feel so huge. And what do we do in those moments, folks? What do we try to remember? What helps? I'm open, right? Yes, and welcome. Thank you, B. Welcome. I think... Well, I've been talking a lot. What do you folks have to say? What helps you, what helps the space feel less than? The space, you know, because space is an interesting thing. It can be something that separates us, but it can also be something that we fill with something different that we hadn't thought of before. I feel like I've been connecting with people that I haven't connected with in a very long time. That's a, something positive that's come out of it for me. And I don't mean to just focus on things that are positive, but I think what was beautiful for me is recognizing the value in the connections that I have and the connections that we all have. And before when things were super busy and I was running and running and running and at the studio and drinking too much coffee and then, you know, all the things that happen, uh, I wasn't, I don't think I was appreciating those things as much. I don't think I was recognizing the gifts that those connections offered me. When I think about the connections and what they do offer me, as opposed to what I'm missing out on right now, sometimes that helps. That helps me anyways. I don't know if it's something that helps you. <laughs> and Christine, watching, getting into a silly mood lately, watching comedy and making funny stuff. Yeah. Like the taking that time to say, I'm going to intentionally create more, you know, of what I want in my life, more of what I need in my life, some lightness, some, um, what, some, yeah, silliness, some, a place to laugh because as, as difficult and as challenging, you know, as it is can, to feel like we're missing something, there's also, you know, Again, opportunities to create, to make room for the things that bring you joy. Important to acknowledge that we're going through some difficult stuff and every day that might be different, but it's also important to remind ourselves that it's okay to laugh. It's okay to love. It's okay to celebrate on that note as well. I, you know, I would like to wish everyone in our LGBTQ plus community a happy Pride Month. It's the only month you get, so take it. No, sorry, that's a horrible dark joke. That's so, so horrible, folks, okay? I, what I'm meaning by that, I want to open it up and it should be every month of the, anyways. Horrible joke, don't know why I said that. That's me letting an odd sort of silly out of the bag there. But I do want to wish everyone a happy Pride. I want to honor that, this time and the things that we'd usually be doing at the studio, the events we'd usually be attending, the things we'd be celebrating and embracing. Um, and right now it's happening, it's happening in a different way, right? Um, and I think it's so, you know, in balance to all the difficult questions we're asking and the awkward conversations we might be having or anticipating having, the learning, the deep learning we're doing and the discoveries we're making about ourselves, there are things to celebrate. There are things to love and honor about ourselves. And again, I just it just comes back to me, this feeling of connection and how grateful I am to be in connection with you. Maybe not directly connected, but to be in connection. That is a beautiful thing, no matter where you might be in the world right now, no matter where you might be listening from. Uh, I wanna celebrate you and your beauty and your color and your strength, your resilience. You know, every time you make that choice to take care of yourself, to live with beauty, live with integrity, live with, I don't know, all the things, or to be silly. Pride Month. And, oh, Christina is imagining every month as a different color of the Pride flag. 
Excellent. Thanks for the save, Christine. Thanks for saving my silliness. And yes, why not? I mean, hopefully that's what all these things do. We highlight these moments in days and months to remind ourselves that they're, you know, we are together in this. We are existing every day alongside one another, with one another, in, and that, you know, if we can get to a place where we don't need months or days anymore, that's amazing. But, you know, I think every once in a while we need to be reminded. So happy pride. <laughs> Yeah, to celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's honor and honor the good work and the good fights and the good, you know, the fantastic conversation. Like there's change happening. There's, you know, we're experiencing change, but there's good change happening out there as well. People, you know, having, like, yeah, brave, beautiful people making sure that things move forward in a, in a positive way, in a healthy way for everyone. And you could, like that could, applies to so many people, the people in our health system, to people working on vaccines or treatments, to people taking care of one another when, you know, in absence of the folks who might usually take care of them, for people taking care of themselves, for people challenging oppressive systems and demanding change for the betterment of everyone um, and everyone who supports those folks in those changes. I'm just babbling now. Um, but I think you know what I mean. It's okay to make space to feel good, to leave space to feel good. Maybe some of that distance can be filled with goodness. <laughs> I don't know, folks. What else is happening? What else is happening out there? How are people filling that space with goodness? or the things that bring them joy. Let's see, I'll put this aside to dry. I'm out of here. I'll use this as a little clothesline. Just gonna reach over here, folks. Hang that up. Don't know if it's gonna dry during this time, so I'm gonna experiment with some paper. Yeah. Yes, Shelly. Might be crying, but you're still making beautiful butterflies. Yeah, and it's a way of letting, you know, letting the art hold the hard stuff, yes. But also, I, you know, at the studio, it's not uncommon to see people. Now, for those of you who've never been to the studio, this might sound very strange. So, here it is. We welcome all forms of creative expression at the studio, if they're not hurting people. That is one thing we do not allow things that are designed or intended to hurt people. But uh, one of the things that is a positive, that we see as a positive, a positive form of expression is emotional expression as well. So it's not uncommon to be at the studio and for someone who needs to cry, to have a good cry. It's not uncommon to see someone laughing so hard that they begin crying. It's not uncommon to see one person just sitting with another person witnessing their tears and honoring their tears. So if you're out there and you're having one of those days and there are some tears happening, I know I can't see you, but I'm honoring those tears. Tears, crying helps us. If you can't stop crying for a very long time, that might be a a good reason to reach out for some support, but being able to make space for that part of yourself that needs to release is a beautiful thing. And inevitably, at least, you know, speaking for myself, after every cry I've ever had, and I cry a lot, I cried this morning, I always feel better. Sometimes crying is, well, crying for me always, it helps shift things. So even if you have a tiny, mini, mini cry. Oh yeah, and the public crying league. I almost forgot, B. Excellent. Oh, gotta scoot. Well, have a fantabulous uh, backyard hangout for a birthday. Be safe and yes, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy uh, those connections, that circle of 10 that uh, some of us in Ontario can now have. Um, be safe and sending lots of love with you, but public crying league for sure. 
Um, there was something we meant to start right before the studio closed. We were talking about how it can be difficult to cry in public and how sometimes there are, and I think I've talked about this on the live streams before, especially in the early days when it was still fresh in my mind, uh, but crying gets a bad rap, really. And I always wonder, would it be different? How different would it be if we didn't have to hide our tears if we didn't want to, if crying was seen, you know, was considered something essential to wellness and not something to be ashamed of. Something that you, and not that, you know, it is something that it's always perceived as that, but I think more often than not, we, we keep our crying to ourselves and that's okay, that's fine. But I think we have a lot to learn from witnessing one another's tears and finding those moments where we can join them, join lovely crying solidarity. <laughs> Um, other, like a lot of cultures do it. Our culture, not so good at sharing emotion in that way or showing emotion in that way. Goodness, sometimes I think I think that even laughing can be considered weird sometimes, but no, I've already used that color. I don't want to use that color again. Um, but tears are so beautiful. Um, they can do so many beautiful things. And yeah, the public crying lead was an idea we, yes, thank you, Dan, crying all the time. There we go. The public crying league was an idea we came up with to create a group uh, that people could join and we'd make patches and we'd make a point of if we were in public and we needed a cry and we felt moved to shed a tear or two that we wouldn't run inside or put our sunglasses on or sort of, you know, stick our head in, into our, you know, our arm or whatever, that we'd let the tears flow and let them be seen by the world. We don't know what that's like. I don't know, many of us have tried it, but I wonder what kind of conversations might emerge or what kind of, who knows, who knows? Sometimes you don't want to talk about why you cry. You just need to have a cry. But if we could make more space where we could do that without that fear of being judged, I, I think that would, uh, I don't know, I like the sound of that. Oh, and definitely at the studio. Sorry, I gotta go up high to do this. Not uncommon to see tears. Hopefully I don't make people cry. I don't, like, that's not something I go around trying to do. <laughs> ah, Tyler, thank you. Crying in public all the time, yeah. He's a beautiful, Thing. When you cry in public, what is it, uh, for those folks out there who cry in public, is there something that it gives? Is there something that you, it gives you? Is there something, me too, Suzanne, excellent. What does it give you? What, what, what does it give us when we can do that, when we can share that? And Christine as well cried, totally cry at the studio, hugged and laughed and happy cried. Yeah, all those things. So if the studio is a safe place to express those things, how can we bring the studio into our own lives? Because that was really the point of the studio to begin with, to create something where we could feel strong enough being that, doing that, practicing that in one space and feel empowered or enabled. <laughs> Only good tears at the studio. Oh, Laura, that's good. I'm assuming at the studio. Maybe, maybe bad tears. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know if there's feedback to be had and to be processed. Um, but yeah, the sense of for me, one of the goals of the studio project, of the Art Hive project overall, is that what we can do in the studio, what we feel comfortable and confident in becoming, that we can transfer those things out into the life beyond as well, right? That it's not just only at the studio where we feel safe. It's not just only at the studio where we feel we can express ourselves authentically. That we learn from being at the studio and having that and being here even having that affirmation that you know we can take those things out and maybe even help show other people that they can have this, those things as well in their life and Tyler Tyler says I cry because I have to it hurts too much to hold on to it I don't care if folks judge me that's on them and not on you I yeah I agree it can be difficult it can be difficult 
to feel that from other folks. But once you get beyond that, once you feel that it's, you know, no, this is mine, this is, this is me, this is part of my value. Yeah, yeah. And then Shelley, oh, having some interesting conversations with the inner critic. When I cry, I hear the words inside of me, stop being a crybaby. That's a perfect example of an inner critic, right? Um, I've had that voice too. And, and in a couple of different, you know, maybe a couple of different voices chime in. Um, one says, don't be a drama queen. Um, don't be so selfish. Lots of things like that, right? Thank you so much for, wow, for calling out your inner critic like that. That's, that's, thank you, Shelley. I feel really honored that you'd share that. Um, one of the things I've learned about my own inner critics is that they're not my voices. They tend to be other voices that I've collected along the way. So, you know, that don't be a crybaby, whew, right? That's, that's a voice of someone, maybe someone in my past, maybe someone who didn't know the power of their words or didn't intend to have that impact, but they didn't realize that I was going to take that and I was gonna carry it with me for a long, long time. And it took me a while, it's taking me a while to talk back to that inner critic and say, I am not a crybaby. I am definitely not a crybaby. I am, a, I am someone who is crying. I am someone who is releasing, like Tyler Wright, when it gets to that point where I don't wanna hold on to this anymore. And you know what, I don't need to hold on to this anymore. I can let it go. And I can feel, I can get to the other side of those tears and make space for new things in my life. Um, and let's not forget that crying has a beautiful physical, there's a, like a fantastic physical thing that happens to us too when we cry, right? Um, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, so I can't speak to that with any, you know, expertise. But uh, getting to the other side of that, feeling that release, it's a beautiful thing. Um, and babies cry for really good reasons too. I don't know why people, like, why that's an insult. Babies are brilliant. They, they know how to, you know, with very, like, they don't have words, so they need to express things in that way. How brilliant is that? And they have different cries for different things. Uh, like, that's really cool if you think about it. That we learn to make space for, the, for ourselves in the world by making that noise, by letting those tears flow. So I got to a point in my life where I wasn't doing that as much because of those voices, because of that inner critic, and I had to take back that space. And there's a fabulous scene. I don't know if folks are familiar with the movie Broadcast News, but there's a great scene where Holly Hunter just cries her eyes out and she makes space for it. And I've often thought, I'd love to do that. I'd love to have a time allotted every in my day, every single day, where I turn off my phone and I just sit and cry. I think that would be that would be amazing. I'm talking so much today, guys, but I hope I'm not taking up too much space with my words. But I love, you know, what you're sharing. And for folks who are joining us, we're talking about inner critics now. And as I try to make art and don't get as far as I thought I would with it. Talking back to those inner critics to make space for ourselves. It's okay to take up space. It's okay to make noise. It's okay to cry. It's okay to laugh, right? And let's see, like Suzanne was saying, ah, yeah, that almost that interesting point where, so I could no longer, used to wish I could no longer feel things so I would not cry anymore, but I'm glad I was not granted that wish now because without my feelings, my life would be empty. That's an interesting point too, right? That feelings are in our lives for a reason. I like the idea to think of them like tools, that our emotions let us know, they, they give us information about what's happening to us and how we can interpret the world around us. They help point to what we want more of or what we need, what's missing. Uh, yeah, without, feeling I think we'd be missing out on so much, right? I think tools, uh, emotions as information, as tools that we can learn how to, if we make space for them and we name them and we, instead of pushing them away or pushing them down, if we can say, okay, whoa, I'm feeling this right now. I'm feeling wonky, wonky Wednesdays. Then we can begin working with that. If you're not feeling it, it's really hard to work with it. And it's, and it's Carlos. Oh, Carlos, hello. I think we're taught that tears are bad or a sign of weakness. 
Yet there's a real strength in that and owning those tears. Plus, it's not always crying for sadness. It can be happiness too, as I'm sure you all know. A TV show once said that without, without feeling the sadness of tears, we wouldn't have a comparison for when we have tears of happiness. You're all amazing, as are all your tears. Plus, crying makes us pee less. <laughs> Carlos has offered that that last comment isn't scientifically accurate. Um, again, not a scientist, not a doctor, don't know. If anyone is out there who's watching or listening and you'd like to comment on that, please, <laughs> please feel free. That's, that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and Tyler, let's see. I don't want people to think I just got here to a point of accepting of me publicly crying without working on myself and your self-talk. Yes. Um, and I'm not thinking that. I think, and I don't know if anyone else is out there. I mean, how I'm not, I haven't checked in with everyone, but I think you're right to point out that it is a journey. It's a, we, again, I can speak from my own experience, but being taught, you know, those voices, the don't be a crybaby, don't be a drama queen. I received a lot of messages growing up that told me to kind of not show who I was, not to share what I was feeling, to accommodate everyone else's needs before my own. I, I think that might, you know, might be more common than we realize. And I think uh, when you add sort of the gender stereotypes or expectations in there, uh, it can become even more complicated, especially for people who identify as men. That sense of, don't, don't show me what you're feeling. You're not supposed to feel anything. Um, and it is kind of a radical act of self-love and compassion. Not, well, this reminds me of a quote I want to share with everyone. Um, not as a kind of like, artsy fartsy nice fluffy kind of like self-love thing but a real sense of how how much can I love myself how much can I honor myself how much like what can I begin to untangle so that I can have my life and know that you know love myself honor myself in in a way that helps me move forward uh, that's there's some work in that and I think you know for everyone who's shared their stories here um, it's, it's work, it's hard work, but it's beautiful work. And it's look, it looks like we've all, we've all undertaken, we've all decided, we've all made a promise to ourselves, a commitment or, you know, to love ourselves enough to learn how to, you know, tell those inner critics to screw off or to dialogue with them to say, I don't need you in my life anymore. Um, especially if they're not offering anything constructive, but it's a journey, definitely. And learning how to love yourself enough, it's, uh, it's an everyday thing, an everyday thing that at least for me, I, I have to remind myself of every day. Um, it gets easier. I think for the folks who've been doing the work, it gets easier. And like Carlos said, not all tears are sad tears, right? And like Laura and Christine acknowledged too. There, you know, there are many beautiful things that we can take away from our tears. And as Madison, thank you, Madison. Uh, so I'm reading some articles about stress hormones being released during crying. So again, that physical thing, there's something physical that happens. Um, yeah, there's a public crying league. I gotta revisit that with B again. I gotta see what we can do. Maybe we'll make a group where we just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. There's so many amazing ideas. It's so uh, remarkably comfortable and comforting to have people out there who feel open enough to talk about this stuff. And for all the folks who are listening and not chatting or the folks who might be watching after the live stream is uh, completed, uh, if you've got thoughts about this and you want to let us know afterwards, please do. If you have things you'd like to share about your own experiences, please share them. Uh, if you're listening and considering maybe for the first time of having a good public cry, I honor you in that. And uh, just 
Yeah. Learning how to love ourselves is an interesting journey. And Laura, so Laura's saying, all those times of being told I was too loud, dressed up too much, cried too much, it's been a constant battle. Yeah, see, you're not alone, folks. We're all, we're all yes, entitled, you are all beautiful, thank you. Um, and th I'm glad it's been encouraging, Shelley. And perhaps we need, you know, to take more time to remind one another of this. I mean, to have, I think, making time to just say to ourselves, if we're not saying it to other people, at least to ourselves, you're beautiful, uh, you are enough, you know, where you're at right now, doing what you can, that is good. <laughs> that is good enough. Keep working if you want to. If you need to take a break, take a break. Um, that's, you know, all of this is part of that creative humaning thing. Because we miss out, like, on a lot of stuff. The, we're not always taught about these things, or we don't learn about how to have these conversations with ourselves. We can, sometimes it's, I can barely have them with other people, so how am I going to have a conversation with myself about these kind of things? So when we come together like this and allow space for that, it makes me feel quite positive, quite hopeful, hopeful. And you've had your cry and you are good. That is good. I'm glad that you're good, but even when you're not feeling so good, you're still good. Does that make sense, people? I don't know. What time is it here? 3.07. Okay, so maybe I do have time to do a little more work on this. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, Laura, what is this stay at home, stay home club? So, uh, Laura's just suggesting I collaborate with the stay home club. Lover work and the Public Crying League patches and stickers could be a fundraiser for the living room. Wow, maybe. I am, you know, we do got to consider what fundraising looks like for the living room project moving forward. It's a difficult conversation right now and so many people are in need of such specific things. It's a it's hard to compare what we're going through with what other people, what other folks are going through. Um, but I do know, I, I do love patches. And I know I'm not alone in that. So, yeah, okay. I'm going to connect with the Stay Home Club. And maybe we'll see what we can do. So see, folks, it's a difficult thing. Even I struggle for asking for what I need. I have a hard time putting words to things sometimes. The humaning thing is always so interesting. Let's see. I want to do some freehand, some freehand embroidery here. Just doodling with thread. My fabric's still a little wet, so I'm worried that some of the ink will come off on the thread, but let's see what happens. Maybe that'll be a beautiful, happy accident. I had someone tell me, give me the most beautiful feedback a few weeks ago, saying that I, I was kind of, uh, was giving them a Bob Ross vibe. And I was like, wow, what a cool thing. I don't know, I think I'm a slightly more eccentric and neurotic Bob Ross, but... Um, if I'm even even giving like a small fraction of that, that's kind of cool. And Laura, Toronto area artist. I will send a link. Excellent. So Laura needs to go take care of yourself, Laura. Thanks for joining us and have a, have a good afternoon. I hope the rest of the day goes well for you. That's as the days get more beautiful and as summertime comes. Uh, and people's days shift around. 
I realize that people may not be able to always join us from the 2 to 3.30. And it's okay if you only want to step in and join for a few minutes um, or dip in and out during this time. But if people, like, uh, perhaps we'll do a little poll to see if there's a time that would work better for folks for a live stream Facebook Art Studio Hangout. Because it is really beautiful outside right now. For the folks who were at the, at the beginning, I was talking about how I look at my window here and I see the roof of the building next to me and the sunlight shining through the leaves, casting shadows and that beautiful dappled light that moves back and forth. It's, it's quite, quite, quite beautiful. And I realize that not everyone wants to be inside on a day like this. So if you need to go to do what you need to do, please feel free. This time, I enjoy, I enjoy so much hanging out with you, but this is about what you folks need, what you folks want. So please feel free to do what you need to do. Create in the way you need to create. Hello, Teresa. Oh my goodness, how you doing? Teresa Garcia saying hello. Oh, hello, Thread. What are you doing, Thread? Yeah, loving how everyone sharing their crying stories today. I appreciate that. The recognition of our humanness, like finding those moments to just Acknowledge it, right? This life is pretty special when you think about it. It's pretty freaking special. Excuse my language. Have you guys noticed how good I've been about not swearing? Just want to put that out there. I think I've done pretty, pretty good. <laughs> I've been pretty, pretty good at uh, regulating my expressive language. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Let's see. Oh, I should bring this down. I forget. There's a camera happening. Oh, oh, thanks. Teresa's saying, I'm special. Now, you might mean that in a way of like special, weird special well, there's lots of ways to interpret that but I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know what I'm taking all of the interpretations and I'm gonna love all of those interpretations mm. what am I doing so for folks who are just joining like Teresa uh, again I was saying off the top today has been a bit of a wonky day for me and I wasn't even sure I, if you could see the surrounding table I've got so many different art materials around me because I just wasn't sure what I was going to do but I had these pigments, the brusho pigments, the ink pigments, uh, and they're just like super crazy powerful powders that burst into color when you activate them with water. And for the first time I thought, you know what, I'm going to try it on fabric. And so I put the pigments on the fabric, then I sprayed it with water, the colors activated, then I added a little, just moved things around with a bit of paintbrush and some water. And now I want to do some free embroidery, so just some free stitching on it. I think sometimes when I'm feeling, on those days where I'm feeling overwhelmed or feeling a little uncertain in myself, it feels good to work with textiles and fiber arts. Thank you for noticing the swearing thing. Uh, oh, what left top? Oh, 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 a question from Jenny. Um, yes, so yeah, when sometimes, just to finish that thought before jumping into another one, uh, I find working with textiles and thread sometimes really grounding. It feels practical and uh, I like seeing things happen right away, right? So, oh nice, interesting. Christine is trying to plan an art class series, folks, trying to think of activities. <gasps> this is exciting. I will keep everyone posted about this. And Jenny was asking what's in the left-hand corner. I think you might mean is it this, this piece here? 
Or, yeah, I have some, these are some patches that I've been working on in the past. Um, and I found them as I continued to clean my office. There's so many projects that I've started and put down, meant to return to and then forgotten about. It's one of my favorite things actually, is stumbling upon uh, an abandoned or orphaned project and being able to see it with new eyes. Um, this is layers of fabric that I stitched together and using some found objects and bits and pieces I had around the house. I think old bits of broken jewelry. There's part of an old daisy earring there. Um, you can see the back of my beautiful, <laughs> the back of my stitch work there. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what I wanted this to be initially. I think it was part of, uh, going to be part of a piece of jewelry perhaps. But I think now that I've returned to it, I'm going to make it into a patch, an iron-on patch, but probably one that could be secured with stitching as well. I know that Fabricland has some fantastic adhesive patch backing that you can iron on and stuff, but uh, I always like hand stitching it just to make it a little more secure. But so yeah, that's what that's about. And I think over time, I'll be doing a little more found object work here as well. Um, partially because I discovered a couple of jars in my office of things I'd brought home from the studio in my pockets, which could be its own installation piece. Because at the end of every day at the studio, I would come home and inevitably my pockets would be full of the weirdest stuff. Um, like I sometimes, yeah, like sorting through them, I have no idea where it came from, but I would bring it home and I would just put it into these jars. You know, whatever happened to be in my pockets, I would just put into the jars. So maybe one day I'll share with you, I'll give you a tour of what I've brought home in my pockets in six years of working at the Living Room Community Art Studio. <laughs> a special edition show and tell. So Suzanne says, I made my first ugly piece. Funny thing, everyone I've showed it to loves it. I guess it's because it actually has some political content and deep meaning instead of the pretty whimsical stuff we usually make. I was super surprised by the positive response. Let's see, who would have figured? That's uh, amazing and congratulations. I Making ugly art is sometimes a challenge. Those of you who, you know, who come to the studio or who used to be able to come to the studio regularly probably have heard me invite people to do this from time to time, especially if they're not sure what to create or they don't think they're an artist, I'll challenge them to make a really ugly piece of art. Just make the ugliest thing you can imagine. And inevitably, it's always fascinating to see how extraordinary the thing is that they make, how, how it turns out and it turns into becomes something amazing that they wouldn't have been able to create if they tried to purposely make something beautiful. But by trusting themselves and just going with whatever instincts they had and not judging them, not editing themselves as they go, they create something really cool, right? Oh yes, Jenny, thank you. I could put a pin on the back of it and then I could wear it in different ways, a hat or a jacket or as a necklace. Oh, I love textiles too, Jenny. Love, love, love. I'm, I'm thinking of doing another live stream one of these days where I just mend things I don't even know if I'll talk. I just might mend stuff and hang out. Yeah, that seems like gold. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I find it really relaxing to stitch and to attach things to one another. Again, similar to that, the conversation we were having last week about collage. Uh, sometimes I find it very, um, like there's something very relaxing, but also healing about bringing pieces together. Things that may not seem like they go together uh, or belong with one another, you can arrange them and attach them in such a way where these pieces become a whole and suddenly it all just makes sense. Yeah, which sounds a little bit like the piece that Suzanne was making. You had some dark things you were exploring. You trusted and you let them come out. If you want to share that piece, I'm sure lots of folks would love to see it. Again, it's uh, 
when you don't know at the end of the day and you're not quite sure what to do with all the information you've collected, all the things you might pick up and would like lint, kind of what is it, psychic lint, lint? Is that a thing, you know, throughout the day? Um, sewing circles, sewing circles. Okay, I'm gonna come back to that. Um, Wendy, I'm gonna come back to that. Yeah, the psychic lint we pick up throughout the days or the questions we have in our mind, the unfinished conversations, the frustration of not being able to do the things we want or feel that we should be a part of doing. There's a lot of activity going on. If we take that, and if it's something you feel comfortable with, putting it into art of whatever kind, it's amazing. I'm always surprised by how it can put, how the work, if we trust the process, and maybe it's something to do with the unconscious, maybe, who knows, uh, all the pieces can come together if we just allow, if we make space for them and, all, and give them time to come together. And like some political art emerges out of a very clear vision of a statement that needs to be made in a very specific way. Other times it's a little more subtle and it emerges, it has a, takes on a life of its own. That's, that reminds me of the conversation I was having with Andres yesterday about zombies and the zombies that appear in his artwork. Again, just to, you're not always sure why they're there or what they're doing or what they're meaning, but they're there for a reason. Let the art speak, especially when we don't know exactly what to say. Ah, okay, interesting. And so Wendy Johnson, coming back to sewing circles, is that a suggestion for Christine's art class or just generally something that brings you comfort, that helps you feel good? Or a sewing circle in the old school way of a group of people coming together to mend and sit with one another and chat and just stitch together, like a stitching circle or stitch craft. I think, yeah, that's something that was in my mind with the mending, the mending live stream. A little bit of that. I never had that in my life. Um, I don't know if many people have. So giving it new life, trying it out. Plus I've got a lot of jeans with holes in them. A lot of socks with holes in them. A lot of socks. And then Tyler, I love stitching, but I'm afraid of sharp pointed objects. That is a bit of a conundrum. I know uh, some folks enjoy using uh, wider, like fabrics with wider weaves, uh, and it enables them to sometimes not even have to use a needle, a piece of pipe cleaner with a loop in it, or uh, the darning needles, which aren't necessarily sharp. There's plastic ones that can be used. And then you can use different kinds of threads as well. So there's still lots of things you can do. You can also weave patches. I think maybe I'll do something with a cardboard loom coming up in the next little while. Maybe that'll be the next living room at home workshop and do a bit of loom work. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting, not kits, but odd pieces of wool. And the idea, and then Wendy, the idea of sitting and sharing, yes. Oh, you used to do it with your grandma. Wow, yeah. There's certain traditions that span, regardless of what place you're from or culture or country or ethnicity or race, there's, there's certain things. Mending is an important thing. <laughs> Mending, sewing, creating, making do with what we have. Uh, it's, there's a global tradition of this, and I'd love to dive in. Oh, rug hooking. Good call, Shelley. So rug hooking for folks who want to work with textiles but maybe don't feel comfortable using a needle. Um, the two forms of rug hooking, sometimes there's like latch hook rug hooking where you use yarn and you make those kind of, uh, in a kind of a, a really big wide weave. I'm not sure if canvas is the right word, but uh, tying, sort of latch hooking the yarn onto that to make images and fluffy things. And uh, 
It's super fun. And then there's rug cooking that I was first introduced to from an East Coast tradition where using old clothing and uh, bedding and coats and what have you to turn into rugs that they would use in their homes. And the work that was so beautiful, what they were doing, that these rugs have now also become works of art. There's an enormous tradition, beautiful tradition of rug hooking. Well, maybe that's true. I know some, I was gonna say I know some hookers. I do know some rug hookers in the East. Maybe I'll connect with them and uh, see if they'll do an artist chat and then we can all learn about that skill as well. Guys, it's been amazing connecting with you here and creating with you. I am so, so, so honored to have spent this time with you today, as I am every week. Looking at the time, it's 3.26. So we'll be wrapping up shortly. But again, for folks, if you're watching or listening or have us on in the background, or perhaps you're watching after the live stream has ended, thank you for being here. If you'd like to share images of what you're working on, um, yeah, well, let's, yeah, the, mm, rug cooking, we'll figure something out. Uh, if you'd like to share what you've been working on, please feel free. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay, too. Thinking about all our conversations today, including the ones about crying, I find it, uh, I'm working on this piece of fabric here, which is still soaking wet. And I, I kind of had, just had this moment of feeling like it was, uh, like a handkerchief. Something about working with wet fabric and thinking of tears. Something beautiful about that. I'm not quite sure what. Just had a really strong feeling about that. Huh. Again, something to take with me and work on throughout the week. Uh, yeah. Hello, Annie. Hey, Annie. Oh, well, thanks for joining in for the last little bit, Annie. That's okay. Life happens, right? And we got to do what we got to do. I'm glad everyone's out there. For folks who, you know, maybe you're having a wonky Wednesday. If so, thanks for spending some of it with us. I hope it's a little less wonky now. If you are out there and you're feeling the need to reach out for supports, please do, right? You're not alone. Oh, hello, Broken Thread. Oh, Broken Thread. Hmm. <laughs> Now's the time in the live stream where I just make noises and contemplate things and make meaning of things that probably don't mean much at all. That's a Broken Thread, Mary. It's a Broken Thread. <gasps> broken Heart, Broken Thread. Okay, whew. I'm gonna have some more coffee now. I'm gonna put a pin in this. Um, not gonna drink my paint water. And guys, thanks so much for joining. I'm going to continue working on this. I'm so glad I got a chance to start this. Now that I have started it, I realize that this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. And uh, thanks for kickstarting me into working on this piece today. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Reach out for those supports if you need it. Don't be afraid to cry or just acknowledge those feelings, name those feelings and love yourselves. It's a, it can be a difficult thing to do, but it's worth it. It really is. Oh, and if you have any ideas for Christine, I'm going to connect with you and see Christine one, uh, with the art class. And there, let's see what we can do with those, right? Christine's an incredible artist. Um, and I'd love to take a class with her. So we'll figure something out there. We'll see how we can support her in that. But yes, share your work love one another, love yourselves. And until we can connect and create again with one another in person, I really do look forward to connecting with you again online. We'll be back here on Facebook next Wednesday from 2 p.m. till 3.30 and back on Instagram on Tuesdays from 2 to around 